Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Zach Pascarello. I am a certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor, and I own Harrisburg Bookkeeping. We do bookkeeping, taxes, uh, primarily working with QuickBooks, obviously. Pay your bills, create your invoices, manage your chart of accounts, categorize your transactions, all the super fun and exciting accounting and bookkeeping stuff. So today I wanted to make a quick tutorial for QuickBooks, specifically on loans, mortgages, interest payments, and principal payments. I see this often with real estate, real estate investors. Um, I recently started a trucking company, so I've got a loan for my truck. Maybe you own a restaurant and you've got a loan on maybe a freezer or some a grill, some type of large piece of equipment. Maybe you are a construction worker, contractor, and you have some type of tractor or another, maybe a lawnmower, another piece of large equipment. So loans are everywhere. Everyone probably has a loan um, and accounting for them is very important. So it's, it's a two-step process. And without further ado, I'm going to jump right into it. So hopefully this video is helpful. And if you're in QuickBooks, if you're a business owner, hopefully I can help explain some things. Okay, so this is just a sample company for QuickBooks. So there are multiple different ways to record transactions. Um, just for demonstration purposes, I will do a journal entry. So journal entry pops up, you know, date, whatever you want to make the date. Uh, you can, it says journal number, it's doesn't need to be a number it can be you know truck one purchase okay now this is where it's important it gets kind of confusing so i wanted to walk you through this step okay so whenever you purchase an asset like this machinery equipment building you need two different accounts so you need an asset account and you need a liability account so Super exciting stuff, but you know, accounting assets equals liabilities plus equity. So if you are getting a loan, you also need to get an asset. Um, it's it's more simple if you're just getting a, like a, a cash loan. So if you get a loan from the bank for twenty thousand dollars, you would just increase your cash, your checking account by twenty thousand dollars, and then you would increase your liability, your note payable, your loan, your mortgage by twenty thousand dollars. But for this, I will show you. So you're going to want to do, first of all, a debit. So under the account type here, we're going to do a, let's see, fixed asset. And we will say machinery and equipment. Now we'll say vehicle since it's a truck. So not super important what the detail type is, but we'll go fixed asset and vehicle. And QuickBooks gives you a nice little description here on the different types. And we'll name it whatever we want. I'm going to name this Truck 1. And that's it. So we have created this asset account in your chart of accounts. It's a fixed asset, Vehicle Truck 1. <clears throat> now, debit. So the, the, the value of the truck, for simplicity purposes, we'll say $28,000. And that is just original purchase price of the truck. And then again, for simplicity purposes, we will go ahead and create a loan. Sometimes if there are other fees associated with purchasing the truck, those can get capitalized. It happens more so with the HUD statement on a mortgage or a building or house purchase. You're going to have a lot more broker fees, realtor fees, legal fees, and those fees are typically capitalized with the asset. But we'll just keep it, we'll keep it simple. Um, so we're increasing the asset with the debit. Now we're going to create a long-term liability. So long-term liability is just anything that's longer than 12 months. We'll make it a note payable and we will once again, keep it simple. Truck one loan. 
if you want, you know, you can say Orstown Bank note payable number one, two, three, if whatever the loan account number is, it's up to you. How, however, makes the most sense for you. I'm going to say truck one loan. Save and close. QuickBooks automatically matches the credit to the debit. So $28,000 for the truck purchase. So that's how you, on the date that you received your loan, this is what, how you would account for it in your QuickBooks. So you're increasing your truck and you're increasing your truck loan. Oftentimes, we'll do save a new. So most times I see this. Um, I see an opening balance equity debit and then like the truck loan if you just open up the loan it'll do it like that and then whenever you create your truck it's just it's just an extra step and then you create your truck 28,000 and then if, if you were doing two different journal entries and then you would do opening you would decrease your or you would increase your opening balance equity just skip the opening balance equity that really should not be used so you want to skip the opening balance equity and just do increase asset, increase liability. Okay, so now I will show you what that looks like. It's not going to show up on your profit and loss, but it will show up on your balance sheet. So here, as of July 29th, we see here asset truck. Truck one, 28,000. And then down here, and this is just a sample company, so they've got a lot going on, which, um, and then long-term liabilities right here, truck one loan. So increase the assets, increase the liabilities, assets equals liabilities plus equity. So everything matches, everything's balanced out. Now, let's say that loan, you know, we got that loan a couple months ago. Now it's time to pay the loan, pay your, your first monthly payment. Don't worry about the date. We'll say, we'll call this truck one, payment one. Now, let's just say that the payment is $500 and it's gonna come out of our checking account. So I'm gonna do this backwards. So you credit your checking account for $500. That means $500 is coming out of your checking account. Now it's going to look like one transaction. $500 is going to come out of your checking account, but the $500 needs to be split between interest and principal. The principal, the amount that goes towards principal will not show up on your profit and loss statement. It will not reduce your tax liability in and of itself. So we're gonna debit the truck loan. Let's just keep it simple, $400. So we're gonna increase the amount of our loan outstanding by $400. And then I guess there's no interest account. We'll create that real quick. And then interest paid whatever the different, whatever the interest paid is. So for this example, $400 went directly towards the truck loan. $100 went towards interest. And then $500 went towards, came out of your checking account. So it's very important that you split the principal and the interest. The interest will reduce your tax liability in the year that it occurred directly, dollar for dollar, $100, but the principal amount will not. You're going to have to run a depreciation schedule, which is a completely different topic. I'm not going to get into that now, but I know for my truck, it's five years. So basically I would take 28,000 divided by five. And then that is the amount that I would depreciate annually. If I'm using straight line depreciation, I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, depreciation is a whole nother topic. I would encourage you to do some research on your own, but then ultimately reach out to your accountant or your CPA because um, he or she will probably need to help you out with that depreciation schedule. Um, yeah, so the truck loan will, the, the decrease of the truck loan will come, will show up on your balance sheet, but not on your profit and loss statement. 
this checking account here, this will show up on your balance sheet, but not your profit and loss statement, this $500 transaction, but this interest paid will show up on your monthly profit and loss statement. And then last thing I wanted to say, make sure you guys are getting, keeping, maintaining, organizing your monthly loan statements. Ask your loan officer, your banker for an amortization schedule. That way you can see exactly how much interest you're going to be paying every single month so that you can do these journal entries. Definitely, definitely make sure you have that amortization schedule and you have those monthly loan statements from your bank, credit union, loan officer, whoever is making these loans for you. So I hope that was helpful. Hope that made a little bit of sense. I know um, if you're not in QuickBooks and, and doing accounting all day, it might not make a lot of sense, but the, the, the big picture, the bottom line up front is the big key takeaway is that you need to be separating your principal and your interest. So this $500 payment, even though it's cash coming out of your checking account, it's not reducing your tax liability. It's not on your profit and loss. That's $500 every single month. The combination of depreciation and interest should get you somewhat close to that $500, but you got to go through extra steps to do it, to do it correctly. So recording the loan, you increase the asset, you increase the liability. And then every single month after that, for the loan payments, you take money out of your checking account, you pay down the principal and you pay interest. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'll be posting this video onto my YouTube channel. Uh, it's just under my name, Zach Pascarello. You can find other QuickBooks tutorials on YouTube. Follow my Facebook page, Harrisburg Bookkeeping, for daily and weekly bookkeeping, accounting, and business tips. And if you all have any questions, feel free to reach out. My email address is on my website, harrisburgbookkeeping.com. You can message me here on Facebook. And I will talk to you all in the next video. Have a great day.